Greetings, Scattered Sheep. Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Jackie Elnor. Well, today I might get into a bit of conspiracy theories. And I know a lot of people say, oh, don't pay any attention to conspiracy theories. But I think that sometimes things that are considered conspiracy theories today are the headlines tomorrow. Certainly, uh, we all have been hearing about the Bilderberg Group meeting and sending reporters scrambling as the police harass anybody who tries to report on the event. And, uh, you know, these are the movers and shakers and the people with the money and the people with the power who are coming around. And uh, at the last one, the agenda, they said, was going to be Donald Trump. He isn't uh, one of the guys that is a team player with these people, and so they don't like him. So there's something to that conspiracy. You know, it's, it isn't all just, you know, imaginations of, of people and uh, fiction and everything else. There's, you know, some certain things that, as we as Christians are given a little preview of, especially in the New Testament and in the prophetic book of Revelation and um, Jesus' uh, message, of the Olivet Discourse, there's just certain things that we can know from reading Scripture. And uh, to know when his time of his coming and, and of the coming judgment is near. Um, for instance, we know that the revelation reveals there's going to be coming a one world economy, government, and religion. And none of those things are going to make God very happy. It's pretty much the undoing of the Tower of Babel. So we know that that's going to happen. And, you know, we've only seen the how oh, the the movement of the nations and things towards these things in you know in our lifetime well my lifetime but i was born in the 50s <laughs> if i can give that away we know also that there's going to be according to our lord jesus there's going to be lying signs and wonders and pretty much that's going to be the rule of the day that there'll be unexplained things that um you know, there's, there's, there's going to be signs and wonders coming from him, and there's also going to be signs and wonders just um, marking the dangerous, perilous times that we're in. Also, there's going to be deception, and of course the deception are the lying signs and wonders. Of course, there's also uh, the sign of the coming of the Son of Man in the heavens, and that's, not, that's a true sign and a wonder. Uh, differentiating between the two, there you go. You have to have some discernment for that, possibly, as things get more convoluted um, as far as theological ideas go in the direction that even Christians are going with their uh, ecumenism and their influence to want to join back with the Roman Catholic Church and form the great horror because we know that's going to happen. So we can look at that trend. Uh, the global religion, uh, the Bible likens that to Babylon and to Egypt. And so uh, we can look at those things and to see what those things are because those are just the um, the, the schemes and the doctrines of devils uh, you know, in the scheme of, of, of the devil that the Bible says we're not supposed to be ignorant of his schemes. And if you want to see exactly, oh, I guess the core of satanic doctrine, you can look at Egypt and Babylon. Actually, we can know a lot more about the religion of Egypt even than Babylon because so much is left to us in uh, hieroglyphics and the ruins of uh, of Egypt. And we know, of course, that there's going to be coming the rapture and then Armageddon, the, the, the final battle and the, the, the judgment of the living and the dead. And, of course, the thousand-year millennial rule of Jesus. Now, those are all things that we know are coming. And so... It's not a conspiracy theory when you start seeing other areas where um, that 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 are you know the things that are going on that show that these things are coming down the pike, and boy, we're closer today than we were when we first believed, aren't we? Um, there's this book, and I, I'm it's some of this is leading me into this topic, which may sound a little strange to some, but it's the topic of UFOs. 
And many of you know that my late husband, Bill Almore, wrote two books about UFOs back in the 90s. The first one was called UFOs in the New Age, and the other book was called uh, UFO Cults in the New Millennium. And so, oh, he did an awful lot of research into the topic, and I assisted him in a lot of ways with transcribing tapes and interviews and all those kinds of things and with uh, proofreading, editing, and, and all of that. So I am pretty well versed on the topic, though the topic is so big that it's really hard to um, talk about because it's just too big of a topic. So I'm just going to stick with one thing that I really want, want to show you about. And this is um, one of the books that... Uh, I was I was looking for his book on UFOs and so I found this whole box full of UFO books and this one caught my attention. It's called The Stargate Conspiracy. Now this book was um, written I think a year after Bill's last book and so it wasn't included in, in his UFO cult book. The subtitle is The Truth About Extraterrestrial Life and the Mysteries of Ancient Egypt. Now th these these authors are atheists, okay, and yet they're trying to see parallels between different major world religions and and the channeled messages from so-called space brothers. And this is where it gets very strange because the space brothers have been having the same message for quite a long time as as uh, this book points out and documents. It's a very scholarly book but yet it's a book I wouldn't recommend because of its antagonism towards uh, who they call the Old Testament God. They saw him as a villain, as a, a meanie, uh, you know, that wanted to judge everybody and tell everybody how to live, and they, didn't, they don't like that. But uh, in chapter 7 is called End Times the Warning. Now remember, now the first six chapters all dealt with all of the different myths and things regarding uh, the the so-called gods um, that 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 came out of Egypt. Egypt is really the birthplace of the occult. All the occultic ideas go back to Egypt and to the weird um, religion of Egypt and their and their many gods. And uh, so all so the all the other chapters lead up to to this one which is the last chapter of the book other than the epilogue and it's called end times the warning and let me just read i may do a lot of reading but uh bear with me uh, because it's it's actually going to lead to trying to look at the big picture of things it starts out in chapter seven there is undoubtedly a widespread expectation that these are the end times, that apocalyptic events are on the horizon, and that the end of the world may really be nigh. High-profile books and films are now implanting the idea that some major and highly devastating event will soon ravage the world. And even if mankind does somehow survive the coming cataclysm, it will be as traumatized and hopeless refugees, desperate for strong, empowered leadership. At the forefront of this mood of escalating doom and disaster is the unique excitement generated by the very idea of the millennium. It is as if the year 2000 marks the pinnacle of all our hopes and fears, although the negative aspects are constantly emphasized at the expense of more positive and optimistic expectations. Okay, keep in mind this was written in 1999. They didn't, you know, this is before 9-11. This was, um, you know, really at a, at, a, at a time when everybody was uh, worried about Y2K. And, and uh, a lot of people felt that Jesus had to return, the Christians, because this is the chapter she's referring to Christians here, that, uh, you know, that, that Jesus would have to come back by 2000. So many people thought that because so many false prophets and date setters pointed to the year 2000. And so here we are 16 years later and, uh, you know, we see things escalating now that they were talking about back then that maybe weren't so obvious when they wrote this book. Um, continuing quoting, 
The millennium, as such, only makes sense in a Christian context, supposedly marking 2,000 years since the birth of Christ, but now virtually everyone is caught up in the hysteria. With all eyes on the next few years, what a pity it would be if nothing happened, and what a temptation for certain individuals and cabals to ensure that it does. Okay, well, of course, as we can see, nothing happened, and so what, what did that do? That meant that put everybody back into sleep as far as, as I'm concerned, as far as what I have seen. Now, as we're getting closer than ever to the Lord's return, we see people just ignoring it and looking the other way. Uh, they continue. For Christians, the end times fever means the second coming of Jesus, as predicted in the New Testament, with the co-committant apocalyptic events described with perhaps excessive zeal and in the book of Revelation. We are led to believe that if Jesus, believed to be the epitome of divine love, returns to earth in glory, then he comes to initiate the final conflict between the forces of good and evil, the battle of Armageddon. The Christian expectation is only part of the story. For example, New Agers have been prepared for this time, the dawning of the age of Aquarius, for years largely because of their acceptance of the prophecies of the 16th century French occultist Michael de Notre Dame, more familiarly known as Nostradamus. From his psychic interpretation of astrological data, he singled out the year 1999 as a particularly disastrous one for mankind if the usual New Age interpretation of his obscurely worded quatrains is accepted. Critics have pointed out that virtually any prophecy can be read into his words, rather like the code read recently into the words of the Hebrew Bible. Of course, they're referring to the Bible code, you know, with the uh, equidistance letters uh, spelling out different things. I've talked about that before. That is, that is also occultic. Uh, yet to question Nostradamus to a New Ager is rather like criticizing the Bible to a fundamentalist Christian. Even so, if the author of the book of Revelation, believed to be St. John of Patmos, may be one of the two major creators of the millennium, Nostradamus is very much like the, is very much the other. So he, the, what they're trying to say is the two witnesses referred to in the Revelation are Nostradamus and, and John the Apostle. I mean, how nutty can it, can it be? But then they, they, then they get into how this uh, comes back around to the belief in these gods of Egypt and how that ties in with the messages that they're getting from UFOs. Um, on the next page, it says, what we call the Stargate conspiracy is the fostering of a belief that extraterrestrial gods created the human race and presided over its civilization and that those gods are about to return. This belief is being promoted in different ways to different groups of people, but the underlying, underlying themes are always the same. Once these beliefs have entered into the collective consciousness, it will be relatively easy to use them as the foundation for a new religion. The ultimate aim of every organized religion has always been social control, and this one, we fear, will be no exception. So, they're seeing that this Stargate conspiracy is the ideas of all these years of the occult looking all the way back to the time of Egypt that they're going to have their final stand and uh, they see themselves, those in the occult and those who have been channeling the Space Brothers, they see themselves as the good guys and uh, it's interesting who this book points out to be the the enemies of the, the these these people of the light the enemy is the children of darkness and this book identifies the children of darkness as islam i just thought that was very interesting in spite of the fact that this was out before the year 2001 and 9/11 so just as i kind of gave you a list of the uh scriptures that point to what things are going to look like in the end times. Here's kind of an overview of what the New Age and the occultists feel that the end times 
are coming up to their new age, their their millennium of peace, what it's going to look like. Um, first of all, their their ideas are that we were seated here by the ETs. It's the whole chariots of the gods idea that uh, mankind wasn't created Adam and Eve, but spaceships came down here and you know started a colony and then left and let us in left the colony here to see what they can do and then come back and check on them later uh, so the alien ancestors will come back to help the earthlings and it's going to be in a time of great need that they're going to come back and there's going to be an exchange program according to the ETs uh, kind of like if you ever saw that uh, that uh, series on TV called V that kind of got canceled before it even culminated in anything. That was um, these evil UFOs coming down pretending to be good people and wanting to have like an exchange program and bring some of the earthlings up to their planet and uh, let their some of their people come and live on our planet. It, it kind of reminded me of the Twilight Zone. Remember it was called To Serve Man? And, uh, you know, Rod Serling was pretty much ahead of his time, I will say. But uh, the, uh, the the ETs, that really tall ones, they were with these big heads and like nine feet tall. And they were going to help us and, and teach us how to never have famines or pestilence or anything again. And they were doing all these good things. And they wanted to bring a whole group of uh, of exchange students to their planet. And uh, they had given... Um, the government a book called to serve man and they were trying to um, I guess find a way to um, translate this book and so they were working hard at it and they finally cracked the code and as the main uh, reporter guy was getting onto the spaceship his uh, the, the the associate comes running after him screaming at him don't get on board to serve man is a cookbook and uh, you know that was the climax of that he of course was taken up into the ship it was too late because no one would believe he w he wouldn't believe what anybody was saying about how sinister they were so also um, in the new age idea of the end times they believe that the monuments in Egypt were actually made through the technology of these alien ancestors of ours the sphinx and the um, pyramids they they all uh, somehow speak to us as to the uh, our, our our ancestry of, of being from other planets and and the uh, the uh, return of the supposedly when the tunnel that goes up to the king's chamber actually lines up with the star Sirius or something like that it's really crazy and you know what's so crazy about this these ideas that have been in the occult for a long time um, some some fringe Christians have even written about the Great Pyramid like that's the key to knowing when Jesus is coming back Conf when they're confusing the occult and the devil's ideas with God's really a bad place to go to especially if people start looking at the so-called zodiac and trying to uh, to figure out the gospel in, by looking at the zodiac which again those are the symbols and the things that came from Satan and not from God because God uh, is the word Jesus is the word the logos he gave us his the word and nothing is a better uh, revelation of God than his word uh, also on the uh, agenda for the new agers and the uh, and the people promoting the space brothers that they're looking at this thing called the council of nine they're the nine gods in in Egypt but they don't talk much about one of the gods which was called set was one of those nine entities um, and uh, set was the god of destruction so somehow he's got to fit into their wonderful future also uh, they teach that we're all divine beings uh, because you know we're the children of the gods and so we're part of the God uh, ourselves um, it's really pantheistic and it's creepy when you see these things come and creep into Christianity okay they're also when when they come back these space brothers they're going to assist us in our evolutionary leap forward as sons of light where we're going to then have all this in power but only the ones who are drawn to their light that are going to you know become these sons of light 
and then they see this final battle between the between the sons of light and the sons of darkness and of course you know they prevail so with that in mind i can look a little bit further into uh how this stargate conspiracy is 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 shown in this book because they're looking at all of these ideas that come out of the occult the new agers and the and the close encounters and have you know kind of put it together what what they're expecting and again the big thing that they're expecting is this one world religion oddly enough where every you know where the um all the religions come together and uh, in this same uh, chapter i was reading it has a subheading of apocalypse now and it reads we have also noted that this system embraces all the major religions of the United States, even welcoming such exclusivist groups as the Mormons. This new hybrid belief system also incorporates the main esoteric developments of the last 200 years, such as the Great White Brotherhood, Ascended Masters, Root Races in Atlantis, besides major 20th century phenomenon, including gray aliens and UFOs. This elite has notable exceptions exceptions it does not include a major religion of african americans or of the arab world muslims are not invited <laughs> so they see them as the ones to avoid it says time and time again the anti-muslim strand of this conspiracy becomes blindingly obvious but why would the likes of the cia be actively encouraging it no, and i did that takes a whole nother show to talk about that conspiracy theory uh, the whole tenor of this plot is one of preparation, of sowing the seeds of a certain mindset in as many people as possible in advance of some global event. The possibility must be serious, seriously considered that the conspirators are preparing the ground for some kind of major occurrence, a revelatory event that will suddenly, dramatically, and radically change the world forever. What form this might take is uncertain. A carefully stage-managed return of the gods to Giza before a mass audience, perhaps. But what is certain is is that these people have the resources and technology to present such an event. Now, when I was talking earlier about the Bilderbergers and some of these so-called Illuminati, you know, and again, everybody calls those conspiracy theories, whether these people actually do exist and they are practicing the occult and, uh, and it's becoming very much popularized among these so-called elite or things like that, um... You know, one of these things was really bizarre that we saw recently. That we're seeing these Egyptian symbols and these uh, these symbols of the occult and all of that all throughout um, the the people who would refer to themselves as globalists. And this is not any part of our imagination. This is not a conspiracy theory. Uh, have I'm sure a lot of you watched that most wicked satanic ritual that was done at the Gothard Tunnel uh, in Switzerland a couple of weeks ago. And they were all pretty much, you know, I don't even know how to describe it. It was so esoteric. And you could look it up, the, Goth, the Gothard Tunnel ceremony and everything surrounded worshiping of this goat-headed creature and you know this is a major opening of a tunnel that took a decade to make that eight lives were lost in the creating of this tunnel that goes through the alps and why would they have all this evil wicked symbolism that this book this that the stargate conspirators use okay so yeah that so so there's some substance to this there's one thing to say oh this is a conspiracy theory it's another thing to look at the substance of those things and those who don't like that conspiracy theory then give us your theory why are all these symbols being used why are musicians and everybody using this pyramid and all of these things you know it, it's is it you know is it just some some fad or something or is there meaning behind these things let me play you this quick clip from one guy who has been looking at these weird manifestations of symbols being used by all of the one-worlders. Now in this clip I'm about to play, this is uh, 
talking about what happened a couple of years ago at the nuclear weapons summit at the Hague in uh, the Netherlands, which happens to be the center of many globalistic uh, organizations such as the uh, World Court. Here's what one observer on YouTube noted about that. And again, all the same players who go to Bilderberg are going to the Bohemian Grove. And just to fully put it into perspective for you, this is a picture from a nuclear summit back in 2014. And again, all these same people that go to all these same meetings show up at this. But right here is where they really showed their hand. In the middle, you have the holographic pyramid atop a sun disk. And there's a circular desk around that sun disk. And it's maybe hard to tell right here, but if you looked close, you can actually see the Egyptian hieroglyphics all within that. I'm showing you this so that you'll see some of that occult symbolism we see tied in so often with these world leaders, because essentially that's what these people are doing. Those that are working behind the scenes in the shadows, everything they're doing, all these bricks they're putting in this pyramid, is for a beast system or an antichrist system. It's that New World Order stuff, right? So we have all these little minions of the devil, right? All these, basically, these Illuminati figureheads, these different people that are running things, they're running this world from the shadows. They had their little meeting, and on the same weekend they had their meeting, America has the worst mass shooting in its history. Now there's many conspiracy theories saying that the chaos that we're seeing in the world that that is actually being manipulated and it's interesting because this so-called council of nine uh who were supposedly the nine gods from e ancient egypt uh they say that the communications being given to these channelers from this council of nine have been unfolding since 1952 and it's uh this author says that we have seen that the Council of Nine have increasing influence not only over the New Age, but also politicians and multimillionaires. Now, they don't get into the whole idea of the Bilderbergers and all of that, though they do look a bit at Freemasonry and all of that, but they do show that there is supposedly some sort of need to have chaos in the world so that the people will be more receptive to receiving the Space Brothers when they land. Now, a lot of people studying Bible prophecy have speculated could this so-called return of these Space Brothers somehow fit into the end time scenario with the uh, uh, ability of the Antichrist and the false prophet to call fire down from heaven and to do all of these uh, lying signs and wonders that uh, somehow is going to make everybody so uh, mesmerized by him that they would, you know, leave all and follow him and somehow buy into his agenda. And do these channeled messages and occult ideas that have passed on through the centuries, do they give us a little preview of what tricks the devil is up to. Maybe, and maybe not. And on that note, till next week, keep on the lookout. <laughs>